Imagine a world with icy winds and towering glaciers. It was a time when travellers in history started to explore the secrets of maps and hidden treasures around the globe. Standing tall at the forefront of the 16th century, there was a man named Willem Barents, illuminated as a fierce and determined navigator to discover the Northeast Passage. Let's unravel the mysteries of the Northeast Passage with Willem Barents and go back to his era of an insatiable thirst for adventure. Two ships sailed into the year 1594, one of which bears the name Mercury and unfurled their sails in the bustling port of Amsterdam. At the helm of this daring exploration stood none other than Willem Barents. Against the backdrop of the rising sun, Barents set his ship to find the Northeast Passage. The goal was to find a direct route from Europe to the Far East. Instead of bypassing the shores of Spain, which controlled trade routes in the Atlantic Ocean, Barents aimed to find a route through the Arctic region, along the northern coast of Russia and Siberia. As the curtains rose on the grand stage of exploration, the extraordinary saga was poised with the first voyage. When the sun's rays lighted the Arctic on a polar day, the traveller thought that the northern ice desert might thaw, and the way to the country of marvellous spices would become accessible. Two magnificent ships travelled through Russia's northern coastline while navigating the Arctic's bitter cold and roaring waves. As they passed through the ice conditions characterised by an affinity for death and reached Novoya Zemlya, their expedition got obstructed by colossal ice formations. Amidst the unfortunate ice formations, a remarkable encounter awaited Barents and his crew. This was the first time they came face to face with the polar bear, only to be pursued as prey. The crew even encountered the Arctic whales and walruses. Nevertheless, they successfully evaded the clutches of ice imprisonment. Imbued with the spirit of curiosity, they observed the customs of inhabitants in the region, leaving behind captivating depictions of indigenous people. They recorded their ingenious methods of food preservation, graceful boats, and intriguing burial practices. Undeterred by the previous setback, our resolute Willem Barents determined to conquer the imposing icy frontier of the Northern Passage. In 1595, he started a second voyage. The two mighty vessels embarked on his ambitious quest, but this time, the Mercury was accompanied by six other ships, all of which were carrying goods for trade that the Dutch wanted to do with China. In a state of awe at Barents' first voyage, Prince Maurice of Orange astonished him by gifting these ships. By slowing through the frigid waters, his crew battled the horrendous blizzards with the tenacity to reach the Northeast Passage. The new route of the second voyage was paved between the rugged Siberian coast and the enigmatic Vagash Island. Barents and his crew encountered the mighty polar bear again, but this time, the bear was not fun to watch. It mercilessly attacked several men in the crew, resulting in two deaths. With heavy hearts, the crew again embarked on their journey to the Kara Sea. Nature's fury was unpredictable though. Yet once more, the Karasi's pack of ice compelled them to return home empty-handed. However, Barents would not receive the same warm greeting upon his return to the Netherlands as he had the first time. Nevertheless, Barents' second voyage and the encounter gave an overall understanding of the inhabitants of this region. Willem Barents' quest was still unquenchable, even after the massive failure of the second voyage. In stark contrast to the second expedition, no one came forward to subsidise the voyage for his third expedition, starting in May 1596. What replaced it was a reward system, which implied that expeditions would only be paid if they returned bearing documentation of a successful passage to China. Yes, you guessed it right. The pressure on Barents to find the Northeast Passage in the third voyage was immense. On June 9th, 1596, Willem and his crew discovered Bear Islands, which would be his most famous discovery. Today this island is designated as a nature reserve to protect its unique ecosystem. Amidst the agonising journey in the icebergs, the crew also had many differences of opinion amongst them. Barents stormed off to the northeast as the disagreements went uphill. Once again, fate intertwined in Barents' voyage, trapping him within the icy embrace as he ventured towards Novoya Zemlya. However, Barents was unable to reach the Vegat Strait as planned due to the heavy ice. He had to spend the winter on Navoya Zemlya with his crew, who constructed a cabin from their ship's wood on this land. In this remarkable chapter, Willem and his crew encountered the harsh weather conditions of the Arctic region for the very first time. 
Once they had built their temporary home, they also successfully hunted polar bears and arctic foxes, and constructed clothing and strange fluffy hats from the pelts to stay warm. The team, however, grabbed the opportunity when the ice-covered Kara Sea started to loosen its icy halt, signifying the end of their wintering struggle. They cleverly fashioned two open boats from the wreckage of their ship, and set out on a perilous expedition to reach the far shores of the Kola Peninsula. However, Willem Barents did not survive this part of the voyage. On June 20th, 1597, Barents drew his last breath at sea. After this valiant voyage, which sadly did not uncover the route to the enchanted areas of the Far East, the hunt for a northeast route also came to a swift end. The enormous sea that had witnessed the courageous expeditions of the legendary explorer and mariner Willem Barents was permanently consecrated with his glorious name. It served as a monument to his unyielding spirit and the never-ending quest for knowledge that made up his illustrious reputation. What makes a person an explorer? How did mere determination and passion create a legendary man in history? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more fascinating historical content.